Hello, I'm Timothy Perfect from Two Canoes Software, and I'm excited to show you the new features in Xcreds 5. So I'll go through, I'll have three different demos, ones that will show you uh, the uh, how to log in with your cloud password. Um, the second one is how to log in with your Active Directory password. And then finally, how to combine both of them together. This feature set has been in uh, Xcreds since Xcred 4, but we've added a bunch of new uh, additional features. So I wanted to show you those as I went through kind of the demo of how it works. So what I have here is I have um, the, I've rebooted the machine, my Mac, I've installed Xcreds, I've configured it. And this first configured is configured to authenticate at the Mac login window with Azure. And so I'll put in my uh, Azure username, I'll put in it's uh, freddy at twocanoes.com. Before I actually go through that, I'm going to show you a couple of really interesting features. In the lower left hand corner, you can see that we have Xcreds 5, it has the version number, that's not new, but now when you click on it, it'll give you information about uh, this machine. So it's a great way to easily see what version of Xcreds you have, what version of macOS it is, the serial number of the machine, the computer name, the host name, and the IP address. So it's uh, a great way, if you just click on, uh, click again, It'll, it'll go away, so it's a great way. That is configurable as well, um, so if you don't want it, you can turn it off, but um, we do have the ability to uh, see the system information rate uh, on the um, main screen or in the login window. Um, the other thing is the buttons on the bottom, we've made all of those available through customization of uh, in the configuration. You can turn them all on or off. So I'll go ahead and sign in with freddy at twocanoes.com, and I'll put in my class, uh, my cloud password. I can remember what it is. Oh, I think I remember what it is. Okay, there we go. So I uh, set this up to, if there is a local user, it'll prompt me to be able to create this, uh, to map to that local user. Um, I have a admin, local admin user on here, um, but I'm not gonna map to it. So I'm just gonna do create new account. And what that will do is create a home directory with the attributes from Freddy, um, as well as synchronize the password into the keychain and the local user account. So it takes about 20 seconds for the local account to be created, and then I'll be brought to the desktop. All right, so now I'm at the desktop, and what will happen automatically is the Xcreds uh, desktop app in the upper right-hand corner will be launched, and it, you can see that it has the uh, uh, the information about my login session. The big one is that it has credential status valid tokens. So now I have valid tokens um, for um, uh, from my uh, cloud provider, my OIDC tokens. Um, we can also see that we've mapped to a attribute. This is a new feature in Xcreds 5 that it shows the OIDC password status. So my password expires September 2nd. So I'll know that I'll have to go ahead and change it. So um, let me show you uh, another really cool new feature is if you launch a browser and you go into, uh, let's go to um, portal.azure.com and it's asking me for my username and password, but this is the same one I use when I do my cloud login. So if I, um, I can actually enable autofill. So let me go up into system settings and you can do this with MDM and a config profile, but for this demo, I, I'll just uh, do it manually. I guess uh, Spotlight's still doing it, so it's under passwords. There we go. Okay, password options. So I'll turn on Xcreds Autofill. Um, and uh, now when I go to this menu, I can see that I have an Xcreds Autofill. Um, it's going to prompt me for my local password, which is the same as my cloud password. So this doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is used in conjunction with Touch ID. So I would just do a Touch ID. So this is in a VM, I don't have Touch ID, so I'll type my password. But in a normal user flow, they would just do their Touch ID. Okay, see so it filled in my username. And I'll go to the next one, it automatically filled in my password. Then I'll do sign in. And there we go. It's prompting me my, for my multi-factor authentication. Um, uh, so I will uh, 
I won't need to go and do that, but it does show that the single sign-on works. So one of the really exciting things with autofill is because it does have your cloud password, and if you're running Microsoft's uh, single sign-on extension, this will pre-populate um, those uh, tokens. So once I log in once with this autofill, it will then carry through the single sign experience to any apps or web pages. So this is a great way the user doesn't have to tap their type their password again. I of course had to type my password because I don't have Touch ID to uh, allow autofill, but you get the idea. Okay, so I'll close. Okay, so now I've logged in. Um, I have those OIC, OIDC tokens. I showed you that I can use the autofill, which is a big new feature in XCreds 5. Um, we also see this as a green dot up here, which means I have the tokens. Um, one of the new things that we've added in XCred 5 is when it creates the user account. Let me show you this. So I'll go up under users. Did I spell it right? And you can see that this Fred Flintstone account was created. And one of the things that it did is it um, created it with the next available user ID. We've also uh, added a preference to be able to map. So if you want to customize what UID is created, XCRIS 5 now allows you to do that, which is a great feature. OK, so um, let me show you one of the features that we've added for logging in with um, um, full name. So one of the features that XCRIS 4 had is that you can use a keyboard uh, shortcut to switch login windows. So if you want to do offline, you can click this button, switch login window, and it allows you to switch back and forth. But you can also do command option uh, return, and it'll switch between the two. And of course, since it created a local account, Freddy, I could just log in as Freddy with my uh, the password that's been synced from the cloud. It's just going to do a local authentication, but it's the same um, password. So I logged in as um, Freddie. And so it did that because the way I mapped it was the beginning part of the email from Azure. So that's great. But sometimes users are used to, what happens if they go to this, like, you know what, I want to use the same thing when I do local login as the cloud login. So I'll go here and I'll use Freddie. And that works as well. Uh, put in my password. So now I've logged in using that uh, fully qualified username that when I go into. That was true in XCreds 4. But in XCreds 5, we made it for people that are more familiar when they go to their go to the um, Mac login window, they will use their long name. So we now support that as well. So there we go. I logged in with my full uh, full name and I can log in that way as well. At the, as, at the cloud login, the Azure login, uh, you, of course, would have to use whatever that web view required. But for local login, we support all those different methods, which is really kind of nice. Um, one of the other kind of uh, big features, if we open up directory utility and we look into the uh, user that was created, Fred Flintstone, um, you can see that we've added in some attributes um, that are it's uh, prefixed with DS attribute type native underscore xcreds underscore. And we populate their group membership, the OIDC full username, um, the uh, I issuer and the uh, subject, I believe, or sub, um, as well as the OIDC username. And those are used for autofill and other things, but they're also available for using your scripts or other configurations. And one of the things we added, um, I believe in XCreds 4, is the ability to specify what attributes you want to add into directory services. So if you want to add uh, other information from your tokens that you get into local DS for your scripts to use, you can do that as well. All right, let me show you an exciting feature about uh, mapping. So um, let me let me go ahead and log out, and I'll log back in as a service account. So it's just a local admin. And I'll say, and I'll, I'll go ahead and delete that account that was created automatically. Nothing in here, so I don't need to worry about it. Um, but this time, I will create an existing account. So it was called Freddy before, but now I will make it an admin, and I will call this user Fred. And I'll just make the password two canoes. 
Okay, so now we have an unassociated local account and I will log out and I'll log in as Freddy again. Okay, and I'll put in my cloud password. So now the password of the local account and the password for the cloud is uh, different and the usernames are different. So they're completely unassociated accounts. And so I'll put in my um, cloud password and you see I get pr got prompted. It says, what's a local user account? And so I'll put in Fred and I'll put in two canoes. It'll verify that, show them the username as it found it as Fred and, and require you to put in your password one more time. So I'll put in two canoes. And now what it's gonna do is change that password um, to the cloud password and use that local account for um, the login session. So that means if an existing account um, you want to be able to map from the cloud. We had that before in XCreds 4. What we added in XCreds 5 is the ability to uh, map to that uh, local admin user as well. All configurable by preferences, so you don't want to prompt the user, you don't have to, it can just happen automatically. All right, so now if I look at my home directory, you can see it's, it's Fred, it's that same user account, but now I'm using that for uh, my login. So I'll log out again. And let me show you what happens when your password changes. So I will go ahead and go into Azure and I will uh, change that password. Okay, now I have a temporary password and I will sign in as Freddy at twocanoes.com and my new password I'll put in okay now it's asking me for my new password so I'll put in the current one and a new password All right, so what it's gonna do, it is going to update the local keychain to that new password. It's gonna prompt me for my prior password. Um, so uh, there's a couple of options here. First one is if the user knows their prior password. And since we're doing it relatively soon after we uh, knew what the old password is, I know it, I can just type it in. But if you don't know it, there's a couple options. One is you can click reset. And what this does is it'll move the keychain out of the way and create a new keychain, but you need a local admin's credentials to be able to do this. So you'd have to have another admin that you can type that in. Um, if we don't have that, uh, we can also set up what's called a uh, override script to allow you to not have to prompt for administrative credentials and we you could store that locally on the machine or up where up somewhere where you pull it down and use that but um, by default it's just those two options so I know the prior password so I'll put in the prior password let me see uh, okay okay so now it knows to reset that password um, for the keychain and the user account now we're all Synch synchronized again. One of the other things is that dialogue, you're able to customize in XCreds 5, the text that's associated with it. And if I go up to the um, menu item, when I go to sign in, it, this is what happens if your password's changed and it detects it. Um, uh, this banner up where it says your local uh, password needs to be changed, this, uh, before you could turn it off or on, now we allow you to customize the actual text inside that um, uh, in the text that's shown at the top of that window. So that's a, a nice feature that customers have been asking for for a while. Uh, so we're happy to bring that in XCreds 5. All right, so that's the demo of just using cloud login. Next, I want to show you a demo of how to log in with Active Directory. I've already configured this machine, so um, it has the domain in it, and I, um, it's available, the domain controller is available on my own network. This machine is not bound, its binding is not required. Um, and I have a different user than the cloud user I was using before, so I will sign in as that user. And it's um, Dave Test S. And let me get the password. Okay, so it'll log in. This account has never been created, so it will create, provision that user, create the local user account, create the home directory, set the password both in the keychain and 
um, in the local user account to be that same one as the Active Directory uh, password. So now I've logged in, you can see that if I go to the home directory, you can see Dave Test S. And if I, uh, no, Spotlight hasn't indexed yet. So um, I can go up to the upper right menu and you can see that it says uh, valid Kerberos tickets. So I've used those tickets. And so if I go up, go to, uh, oops, go to computer, you can see that I've got a share mounted. And this is where we keep some certificates for some other testing. Um, but also I've in my profile in my Active Directory account, I have a um, home directory defined. So I'll go to network home and you can see use my Kerberos ticket to mount it and I have my stuff. And I can create any new work I want to on here and it'll keep those shares mounted. Um, so it's a great way to use uh, Active Directory to be able to use your Kerberos tickets to log in. Um, you also have full access to log in uh, when you're off the domain with this local user account. So it doesn't require uh, domain access, though there is preferences you can set, set to do that. So let me see if Ticket Viewer comes up yet. No, I guess I know System, Library, Court Services, um, Applications. Ticket viewer, aha, there it is. All right, so now you can see I have my Kerberos ticket and I can use that to access single sign-on resources. So, wonderful. Um, okay, so that's the second demo with Active Directory, but now let's put the peanut butter and the chocolate together and create kind of the most powerful configuration, which is Active Directory and Cloud Login together. So let me get that set up. All right, now I have a third demo environment and this one's set up with the same Azure to be able to log in um, to the cloud, but it also is configured to use Active Directory to get a Kerberos ticket if the username and password or if the password is the same as your cloud as it is uh, when you're on the domain. So um, I will log in as that same test user, Dave Test S, um, but I'll do it at twocanoes.com because I'm doing a cloud login. And my password is one I had before, okay. So now I'll log in, it'll create that user account and it will detect that it's configured to work with uh, Active Directory as well because the domain's been configured and it'll get a Kerberos ticket and it'll try and mount those shares as well. So not only do I have OIDC tokens that allows me to use autofill to log into Azure, but I also have Kerberos tickets that can log in to the network resources which is really exciting. So if I look here, you can see that I do have valid tokens um, and Active Directory I'm set with my uh, username. So let me go ahead and show you that I do have the shares mounted. Shares, and I'm go here. There we go, so I have my shares um, and I also can mount my network home. And there it is. So, um, and I'll go to Ticket Viewer as well. And you can see I have a Kerberos ticket. And I can log into, um, if I wanted to log into Azure, I have the use autofill to be able to fill in my username and password. I don't have Touch ID set up for this, so it's not as uh, slick. But you can see you have this full single sign-on environment cross um, both with Active Directory and with OIDC Cloud Provider. So. That's very exciting um, for uh, XGRADS 5, right? To be able to, we had an XGRADS 4, we've refined it um, so that we, there's more options and more customizations. So that is um, XGRADS 5. There is some other bug fixes and a lot of new keys to be able to customize all this environment. But the big features of being able to use autofill for this full single sign-on experience, we're really excited about. Um, so uh, please visit us at twocanoes.com and uh, for more information and download a trial. Thanks very much for watching.